Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore the 111 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now we've got all sorts going on in this video, Pete's going to be cutting the hole for the mast in the mast partners, I'm going to be making a little bit more blocking for the deck in that area, uh, Rowan is going to be doing some fancy bronze work, making a bracket for a bulkhead, Richard is going to be installing the last of the Thwartship's bulkheads, uh, with the other guys uh, working on the bulkheads as well, um, I'm going to be finishing off the transom hopefully, uh, but before all that I've got to spend a few days up in Squim, uh, clearing out some of the timber that was left up there at the property where the boat used to be. First though we're going to check out what Rowan's up to, uh, he's doing a bit of work on one of Tally Ho's original hatch combings which we're hoping to reuse. All right, so we're back up in Squim for a few days. Uh, when I moved the boat out of here, we didn't take all of the materials. Raoul and Darlene were kind enough to let me leave quite a bit of stuff here in their yard. But now we're settled in Port Townsend, I really do want to clear this place out. Uh, so over the next few days and weeks, uh, we're going to be spending quite a bit of time up here getting the rest of the timber out. Last week, I already moved a big a trailer full of all of our long timber, all the excess planking stock and so on. It was a full 40 foot trailer that went down. Now I'm loading up the live oak, the purple heart. Uh, we've got to process a lot of the uh, timbers off of the old boat. The forklift's still here, the keel's still here, there's a lot of uh, lead still here, and the pig, the lead melting pot, of course, uh, and all sorts of other stuff. So it is quite a bit of work. Uh, we'll be here for a little while and not working on the boat. But it'll be really good to give Ralph and Darlene their garden back uh, and have everything we need down in Port Townsend. I'm working on the mast partner right now. The mast goes all the way down to the keel, so it goes through the deck, which uh, goes through the mast partner here. Um, our mast is octagonal uh, from the keel all the way up through the deck a little ways, um, and then it turns, turns down to 
cylindrical um, for the rest of the way up. So the mass gets wedged in our mass partner here. Um, so this is led into deck beams. The mass goes through it. From the top, we're going to make eight wedges that push tight against the mass and that holds it steady in the, through the deck penetration. Um, so because of that, the hole through this, this is about three and a quarter inch thick, the hole through that um, is larger in the top, smaller in the bottom, 10 degree slope that accepts some wedges to lock it in place. Uh, and then I have two octagonal patterns here. So that's what I'm working on right here. This is the bottom face. Um, I'm, I've got my octagons marked on both sides and I'm connecting the dots now, uh, kerfing um, my corners, uh, all eight corners, connecting those two dots to get the correct slope and then I'll do the rest by hand, chisel out the, each face. Now you guys will remember a while ago I was talking about my deck planking and first of all I was looking for teak for that um, and then when I realized I just couldn't get it in the lengths I need um, and also after considering the very very high price uh, I went for Alaskan yellow cedar uh, instead uh, which by the way my import issues have been dealt with thanks to uh, someone who reached out following the last video but anyway Although I decided not to use teak for the majority of the deck planking, I did really want to use it for the cover boards. Uh, those are the boards which go around the outside of the deck, outside of all the uh, actual normal deck planking, and the king planks which run up the center line of the deck. Uh, partly because it's really traditional to have teak here and it looks really good, uh, but mainly because uh, these are wider planks, wider boards, and it's really, really good to have uh, such a stable wood as teak. So these planks didn't have to be quite so long, so I was able to order teak uh, for the cover boards and the king planks, uh, and that was just delivered, uh, but it uh, is extremely expensive. That relatively small pile of timber that I got delivered earlier uh, cost uh, over $15,000, especially the wide boards that we need for those cover boards, even though they're not that long, uh, when they're that wide, uh, they fetch a very high price. Now the pairing of that teak for the cover boards with the yellow cedar for the actual deck planks is gonna make a really beautiful deck and a really traditional deck. I've seen decks exactly like this laid on five boats from the turn of the century uh, that were still going strong uh, 100 years later. As well as the teak for the deck, uh, in the unit that was just dropped off is some teak to finish off the transom because you'll probably remember a lot of the transom is original but I did not have enough teak to quite finish it off so I just uh, had to end it flat on the top of the board. So I'm now going to uh, cut out the final piece to put on the top of the pieces I already made and make the shape of the transom and finish it off. Now, as you can see, I unloaded a lot of timber from the truck that we brought down from Squim. Some of it's behind me. Uh, some of this will be able to reuse, but a lot of it I can't. Um, and I'm probably gonna do a big sale or even a big giveaway of some of it, potentially at some point in the future. So if you're in the area, especially, make sure you are following my Instagram and my Facebook, uh, because that is where I will be announcing something like that if it happens. Hey, that's good. 
So now we've got the top plank of the transom cut out and actually going to attach this to the lower planks using a spline, which is how I uh, assembled the rest of the transom. Um, so we've already used some dado blades to uh, cut a nice wide groove in that bottom face, that bottom uh, edge of the, the board. Um, and now I'm going to machine up a spline, which is going to be some softwood, which will uh, squeeze into that gap um, on the plank above and the plank below. And that'll actually hold those two planks together, but also because it's softwood, uh, if water ever does get in there, if there's any moisture, it'll just swell up and help to seal that gap and make it watertight. I'm using Port Orford Cedar for that because it's a very rot resistant timber and I happen to have some of the right length. So I'll get that cut out and then do a couple of dry fits um, and then we'll be working towards actually uh, getting the transom finished. Yeah, uh, we are just completed the major bulkheads here. Um, we do still have a few more to make, uh, single layer bulkheads, and they're partial, so they don't, uh, they're not structural at all. This is the last uh, big structural bulkhead I made, and it was a challenge because it didn't fit against the beam, so I had to make a special cleat for it, oak, um, and fit around the mast partner. You know, it was the, it's the biggest one, so putting it together uh, was a little bit awkward. Things seem to move out of shape a little bit as you go, so it was, it was, uh, it was fun. How was life in the chain locker? Uh, Richard made it smaller. It's a lot less comfortable now. So the bulkheads are going in really quickly now, which is really great. And you can see we started putting in a few of these single layer bulkheads. Now these have their planks orientated vertically. Unlike most of our bulkheads, uh, which are double diagonal, uh, they're laminated, glued together, and those double bulkheads are structural. Um, they add a lot of strength to the connection between the deck beams and the frames. These ones are non-structural, um, and we're doing just a couple of these really in order to save weight, uh, save time, save materials, and actually save space and uh, make things a little more convenient. So uh, this one, for example, we actually need this locker a certain uh, width, a certain size, so by having a single layer here, uh, it actually allows us to do that. The other single layer bulkhead, which is further aft, uh, is partially because uh, there's a difficult connection to the deck beam there because there's a hanging knee and a lodging knee and only very small space for the bulkhead to butt up against. And that one, in fact, because there's really no room up there and it's a difficult to fasten that bulkhead to the deck beam, we're actually going to make a bronze bracket there um, instead of our normal timber cleats.
All right, well, well, we've taken two pieces of silicon bronze plate and butted them up against each other and we're welding on both sides of the seam to make sure it's real solid. TIG welders are great at joining any sort of metal because you just have to select the correct filler rod to use. I'm mostly focusing on building up significant welds, not necessarily pretty welds, and I'm definitely gonna grind it later on. <laughs> That's it. All right, now we've installed the bracket in this tiny little space that we have in between the hanging knee and the lodging knee on the other side of this deck beam. This bracket allows us to have a really strong connection to the top of the bulkhead without having a large block of wood in the way. Right now, I'm in what will eventually be a wet locker. Uh, are you wet? <laughs> yeah, because I've been sweating all day. <laughs> it's more moist. Maybe not wet. I'm in the moist locker. Oh no, <laughs> I came in late to work so Leo put me in a stockade. <laughs> Luckily no one's got rotten fruit around here. Oh, I think I can find some. <laughs> <laughs> you hear it. It's uh, it's just that there's so much gunk on the threads. <laughs> like a four inch long <laughs> wrench. Yeah. What's that? A brush. A brush. Yeah, yeah but look, no, show Pete what wrench you're using. No, 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 no. no. no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna get there eventually. Get a, get a smaller wrench, that's too big. Yeah. <laughs> Are they ready? I think so, yeah. Okay. So I finished carving out the hole inside the mass partner. Um, it's this octagon. Um, the mass is octagonal through the deck down to the mast step, and then it turns the cylindrical uh, above the deck just a little ways. We've also got this little block here um, that's flush with the top of the deck beams. Um, and our mass partner is actually bolted along with that. So it's these four large bolts that go through this beam, uh, through a king beam, through the mass partner, and then through another king beam, uh, pinning, it, pinning it all together. This block widens the area just after the mast between the forward face of the skylight um, 
in the back of the mask, the aft end of the mask. Um, and so it gives you a little bit of working space there on deck. Um, if our, our skylight starts here and goes, goes aft, um, if that skylight was tight against the mast, you end up with this thin little dead zone um, between the, the back face of the mast and the, the forward uh, face of the hatch. Um, so it gives a little, you can put a deck box there, you can put anything, you know, whatever, a little bit of working room, um, coil up your uh, halyards and stuff like that. So anyway, so the deck comes on onto this beam um, and then the, the hatch goes here. So I just started cutting out some oak and this is going to become the framing for the transom. So on the inside, the forward face of the transom, there's going to be two upright oak posts um, which are going to be screwed through from the transom um, and they are going to support the transom planks, uh, especially above the deck uh, because the stern post uh, through which the transom planks are bolted actually stops uh, underneath the deck and so above that point there's nothing to support those top boards apart from the fashion pieces right out at the ends and the spline. So this framing will come all the way up from the fashion piece uh, right up to the top of the transom and will add a lot of extra strength there. Eventually I will round over or chamfer the corners, the edges, um, but I don't do that yet because I want to leave it square where it goes through the deck to make corking easier. Um, and so all I need to do right now is uh, take off the bevels from where these posts are going to meet the fashion piece at the bottom um, and then I should be able to fit them in. So it's been a productive couple of weeks. It's always a little bit stressful for me when I have to spend multiple days away from the boat, but uh, dealing with that stuff in squim is really important and I'm gonna have to do a bit more of that in the next few weeks. But the team has managed to finish all the athwart ship's bulkheads, uh, which is a really big deal. Those are all the bulkheads that run from one side of the boat to the other, perpendicular to the center line. Uh, and the mast partners are in and finished and bolted. That's really great. And of course the transom is finished as well. Nina just put the first couple of coats of varnish on that this afternoon. So that's looking really great. Um, um, you will notice it looks like it's a different color right now that's just because that teak is freshly cut that will change to that more golden yellow pretty quickly i did want to let you guys know that after the last video i did sell that small sailing dinghy 
uh, sold it for five and a half thousand dollars which was a fantastic result uh, and it covered the donation to rocking the boat so i'm so pleased with that uh, i also got some really kind donations from other people following that video so big thanks to them and to everyone else uh, who's watching these videos and everyone who's donated or otherwise supported it does make a huge huge difference and it means that uh, we're able to keep on doing this work and i'm able to keep on making and editing these videos so i really really appreciate it and i'll see you next time Cheers.